Hello, my friends. I greet you today, and I trust that God has kept you safe during this COVID-19 lockdown. We are going to study primary six science. I am teacher Ntubiro Godfrey. I'll teach this lesson with Mire, who teaches those of you that study using sign language. You need a pen, you need a pencil, and a book. I was telling your friends of primary four that the word is pencil, not pencil. The word is pencil. You can look up the pronunciation, the right one, in Google, the Spanish word. So don't change the pronunciation. You may also need a recording device to record some songs in the lesson if you are, if you are, if you want. So, dear my friend, before we start the lesson, uh, let's remind ourselves about the deadly COVID-19. We have to remind ourselves that it is a new disease and that it has killed very many people in the world. And it is still claiming uh, thousands every single day. We have to recall that the disease spreads when you touch infected surfaces and people and then touch uh, your mouth, your eyes, and your nose. So the topic you are going to look at today is classification of animals. Classification of animals. So we shall begin by trying to understand in real life what is classification. Here at home, we group objects and items probably according to the way we use them or according to their colors, maybe according to their sizes, but mostly according to what or how we use them. You'll find that clothes are kept in a wardrobe or in a suitcase. Cups are kept in a cupboard or uh, in a a drawer different from that of plates. I think that's what is happening. You can check in your cupboard and see. It may look funny to wash plates, clothing, and garden tools in the same place. I don't think anybody does that. Anymore. All these are done to easily identify these items. We say that these items are classified. You can see uh, the, the forks are uh, in a particular corner, the spoons are here, the plates are somewhere, the cups are here. But it would be fun to find the clothes in, 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 a, in a cupboard where they put the, 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 the cups and the, and the, and the plates. It would look funny. So uh, the good news is ourselves by uh, staying at home, washing our hands, so rubbing your hands, sanitizer, and many as things as we can relevant and relevant education so that we continue. So we are looking at at uh, classification and we have observed that we group or classify items at home. The clothes, legs, the cups, and many others to identify them easily. To identify them for the purposes they use them for. Similarly, scientists have grouped animals in the in two different classes. This helps in identifying them easily. Let's start to compare a goat and a lizard, for instance. You know, in science, anything that moves on its own from one place to another is, is an animal. A lizard, a snail, a worm, and so on. All these in science are 
animals. So let's compare God and the lizard. Think about it. Think of the different ways they move. I ask you a question. Do goats in your home climb walls? Because they don't. They don't. Do they climb like you see lizards climbing? And uh, do they feed? How what are the how are the ways that they feed? How do they feed? Do goats eat butterflies like lizards? Oh, do the lizards eat grass? The answer is no. The ways they are able to reproduce, we will look at them. Do goats lay eggs? Goats don't lay eggs, but the lizards do. We also look at the ways they protect themselves when attacked or disturbed. The question is, can a dog, or rather a goat, bite? Or do lizards have a horns to fight? So we also look at the ways animals protect themselves as we try to group them. We also look at the way they respire, the way they breathe. Do the two animals breathe the same way? Do the two animals have nose? Is the lizard's nose similar to that of a goat? These and many other animals and thousands of animals have been compared to see whether they have things in common or things that uh, uh, they don't share in common. When you look closely at the different animals, you take note of many more feature. They have different body structures. Some have long calf bone along that runs from the neck to the waist. They have that long calf bone along that runs from the neck to the waist. This long bone is called the backbone. You cannot uh, try to notice the spelling of backbone. Now, animals in the environment with such a bone are called vertebrates. Are called vertebrates. 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 V E R G. R A T E S. Let us listen and sing along a song about vertebrates. Vertebrates are animals that have good backbones, warm blooded animals, mammals and the birds. Bats and bats and rodents, all are vertebrates. They all have bad bones, they are vertebrates. Vertebrates are animals that have good bad bones, cold blooded animals, reptiles and the fish. And the amphibians, all are vertebrates. Cold blooded animals, all are vertebrates. Vertebrates are animals that have good fat bones. Snakes, lizards, crocodiles, geckos, and the skinks. Tatas and chameleon and the dinosaurs. All these are reptiles and are vertebrates. Vertebrates are animals that have good backbones. Look at amphibians, frogs, and all the toads. 
building busking water and on land as well frogs salamander all our vertebrates great it is a wonderful piece of music it carries most of the information we need about vertebrates note that these animals differ in many ways but you will still find they have one or two things in common for instance some animals are small others are big some have limbs others are limbless some have wings others are wings there are those that are harmless others are harmful and so on and so forth therefore it is very important to note that animals in our environment have different characteristics and behavior for easy identification we need to group them according this is called classification of animals just like you classify the utensils at home the plates the forks the spoons and so on so we want to look at the five groups of vertebrates we are looking at vertebrates now let's first look at the first five divisions uh, what groups do you not in the song they were majorly five can you mention them yes very good the birds great the mammals that's correct correct the reptiles very good you are very right they are those amphibians amphibians and then the fish the fish so there are the five groups of vertebrates we are saying that vertebrates are grouped into five Birds, mammals, the reptiles, the amphibians, and the fish. Can you give examples of each of the groups of vertebrates? ask an elder person if it is possible you can ask someone who is around there try to get what are the examples of birds what are the examples of mammals when we talk of reptiles what are the examples when we say fish do we have examples of fish when we say amphibians do we have examples of amphibians so ask mom or dad if it is possible to use any recording device and record this song to help you learn it. I'll play it again for you before the lesson ends so that you see it. So we have said that vertebrates are grouped into five. And we 
want to remind ourselves about them in detail. Let's begin with the birds. Why do you think birds are grouped under the vertebrates? Remember in science, the bird is an animal. Birds are grouped under vertebrates. Why do you think so? I think you have given the answer that it is because they have a backbone. The next time they slaughter a chicken at home, ask the mom to give you that old backbone that chicken so that you on it, you look at the backbone, the different bones that make the backbone. So they are called vertebrates because they have a backbone. However, there are many different birds in our environment. These birds we see have slightly uh, they differ. Sometimes they differ slightly, other times they differ greatly. But we try to define them mainly using looking at their beaks. Their beaks. I, I don't want to call it the mouth of the birds. What you call the mouth of the bird is what we call the beak. So we look at the different beaks and also feet. Look at the feet of a duck. Compare it with the feet of a chicken. They, they are really different. When you look at the beak of a duck and that of a chicken, they are different. Can you now recall the different groups of such birds? You must have discussed them at school, you discussed them in your class, with your teacher. So try to find out these different groups. Try to find I suggest that after our lesson, you try to list your thoughts to fully remind yourself about each one of them. You will need to put more focus on their descriptions uh, in terms of their feet, beaks, and common examples, right? So another group to look at are the mammals. Mammals. Can you still explain what mammals are? I'm sure I still remember mammals as vertebrates with mammary glands. Can you mention other characteristics of mammals as learned at school? I hope you still remember those characteristics. Just after here, open the book and look at the characteristics of mammals. Now, since mammals also have other different features, feeding habits and behavior. We also regroup them for purposes of easy identification. These groupings ensure that we easily identify these creatures so that we don't put them to groups where they don't belong. There are nine main groups of mammals. I just want to request you that you revisit your lesson, rather your notes, uh, following what the teacher told you. Make sure you revise your notes, especially on identifying these groups and the differences among them. Right? So, there is this uh, piece of 
which we shall watch. But the words say that vertebrates are animals that have brought black bones into the same message, snakes, lizards, crocodiles, geckos, and the skinks, turtles, and chameleon, and the dinosaurs. All these are reptiles and are vertebrates. Vertebrates are animals that have got bad bones. Snakes, lizards, crocodiles, geckos, and the skinks, turtles, and chameleons, and the dinosaurs. All these are reptiles and are vertebrates. You can sing the song and it helps you recall with his. Can you tell the reason why reptiles are also grouped and vertebrates? Why do you think reptiles are grouped and vertebrates? Reptiles generally move with their bellies near or on the ground. Since different reptiles have different features and behavior, we again go ahead to regroup them according to the similar features they have. After our lesson, please endeavor to read through the work given to you by the teacher of science about reptiles. Um, I would expect you to record this song if possible to learn more about the amphibians and fish. Read your notes to further your knowledge about these vertebrates. Sing this song through, through, and through so that you get the information and then you later try to put it to And as we come to the end of our lesson today, I still want to remind you about the preventive measures of COVID-19. We are advised to wash our hands thoroughly with soap and water. We are advised not to spit anywhere cover our mouth with a tissue when we are coughing and to use a tissue for our nose when sneezing. I wish you the very best of luck. God bless you.